Jeremy Ellis here at MakerRockSetter.com. I'm going to talk about Gitpod, amazing online Docker-style um, IDE. So I'm just going to go to my site on Gitpod. You've got snapshots, you've got all kinds of stuff. But what I want to talk about today is how you would use this with a GitHub repository. So here's a repository. I didn't make it. It's a Node website. And what you do, quite simply, gitpod.io number. Okay, that's it. Um, I'm just going to pull this off to the side so it's generating while we do this other page. Um, by the way, I always go open a new window when opening up snapshots. So what I got here is a basic snapshot, and I've already done a video of that. I've got some um, machine learning snapshots. This is a huge deal, setting up stuff and to have it properly set up for you, working set up. The snapshots are great. The actual repositories, here I've got some PhoneGap. PhoneGap makes Android apps and iOS apps from uh, web pages. So those are snapshots. There's the actual repository. This is the one that's kind of, it creates it for you then, and they are based on the repository. So here we go. It's there. Uh, looking at the readme file, it says, what's it say? npm install. Pretty normal. npm install. Sometimes they say yarn. So that installs all the things in the package.json. Have a look at the package.json. There's a script called start. So uh, the problem here is web pages used to be an index.html file, maybe an index.js file, and everybody could see the code and it was, you could kind of follow along, you could learn. But nowadays uh, we have these compilers that take modules and generate um, different JS files for different browsers, and it's really complex. And you basically have to port the repository and then put it on your Node machine, whether it's your Windows machine, most people would use a Ubuntu machine perhaps, and, and then install everything. Um, here, I just loaded that up, and then I'm gonna do npm run start. I'll probably just hit start. And here, Gitpod is gonna open up a preview window. Well, voila. Uh, there we go. That's what that page is about. Oh, it's using menus. Uh, cool. You can refresh this. You can throw it into its own browser window and have a look at it. And now the menus are along the side there. It looks pretty kind of cool. And this is why Gitpod's amazing. Uh, Replit can do kind of the similar thing, but it's not as, as fast and as easy. Uh, CodePen can't uh, do this. It, it does um, HTML files, CSS files, JavaScript files. Uh, Fetch is a whole nother world. Pretty awesome because uh, all, those, all those programs, they're live continuously. This one is just able to generate things for you, uh, run known packages. If you have your own website, you could then probably, I don't see where the distribution folder is, but grab that and put it on your website. Uh, there's a www folder, but that's not what we're really looking for. Here's typical JavaScript nowadays, or a, uh, HTML nowadays, where you're using require and you're finding all kinds of modules. Uh, let's see what's in the public folder. There's your JavaScript. There's your menu. Uh, pretty confusing stuff. So it's good to be able to actually just, with one click, load it up, get running, see if it works. Uh, lots of stuff doesn't work. Um, and it's great to actually find something that does work. Men might want to do it a different way or continue on. Anyway, uh, just showing you some stuff. Here's by my name. You can share this workspace, which is what I do with a snapshot. You can share a running one. I'm confused by that. You can go to the dashboard, which is quite useful. Um, that will probably open up in another page. Uh, you can stop the workspace. You've got 100 hours. It stops automatically. Um, if you go to the workspace, It'll show what you've got running, and you can trash them. Uh, you can stop them, things like that. Anyway, uh, learn about gitpod.io. It's, it's really impressive stuff.